Now we're going to look at a second method for determining the time constant from our RC circuit data. A second method is going to be to, instead of using one data point, we estimated before um, from the information that we had and based on our analysis uh, using the mathematics, we determined that um, the time constant was going to correspond to the time from when we first closed the switch to when the voltage reached uh, 3.16 volts, which occurred somewhere between 0.1 and 0.11 seconds. Um, so therefore we established that the time constant was probably uh, somewhere around that value. Um, <clears throat> so what I've, the, the problem with that method is that um, we only have one data point that we're using. We're only looking at um, information from one point in time. What would be better to do would be to t fit all of this data to a curve that we know and then from based on the data and fitting multiple data points we can get a better estimate of what that time constant should be. Okay, so if I go back um, to my uh, derivation here, I know that if I know the uh, initial state of the voltage across the capacitor and the final state of the steady state voltage across the capacitor, that the output voltage is going to be given by this equation right here. Okay. Um, so I have measured the voltages and I have measured the time, T. So now what I want to do is it's my job to try to figure out what this parameter, this unknown parameter of the time constant tau is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my um, spreadsheet here and I'm going to create another column that I'm going to call the model. All right, and the model is going to be the equation that we derived for how the output voltage should change as a function of time. So it's going to be this equation right here. All right, where, um, and I'm going to use the second form of the equation right here, um, where 5 corresponds to our, our V out um, voltage. Uh, sorry, at, uh, the, after the circuit has been operating for a long period of time. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that. And now um, my model is going to be, I'm going to reference the final value right here, absolute, multiplied by 1 minus the exponential function raised to the negative t. So I'm going to reference my adjusted time column divided by the time constant value that we're trying to determine. Okay, and we know we have estimated that it should be about 0.1, so I'm going to go ahead and um, enter that and make sure that the time constant value is referenced absolutely. All right, so now in my model, um, I'm going to fill in my model all the way down, and I'm going to add yet another column uh, to my data, and my model is going to be this green line right here. All right, and I see from that now that the estimate of 0.1 is pretty close, but we see in this region right here, let me expand the um, axis here so that we can see things a little bit better. Um, I'm going to go from a minimum of zero to uh, the interesting things happen all within one second. Okay, so we see that the model fits fairly well to the information, but not, not perfectly. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I want to, as best I can, fit the model to the data. So what I'm going to do is calculate the difference between my modeled output and the measured output. Okay, so this will be the uh, squared difference between the model and the measured data. So I'm going to take my uh, modeled output and I'm going to subtract from that the output uh, that we actually measured and I'm going to square that for all of the data points that we collected and then I'm going to take that entire column and sum up all of those squared differences. All right, so I'm going to take the sum of all of that data. All right, And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the solver to um, try to minimize the sum of squared deviations based on, uh, by adjusting the time constant value. 
Okay, so uh, I'm going to go over to my data column and I should have the solver tool enabled. I'm going to click on the solver tool. It's going to ask me what parameters I want to set. So I want to set the target cell to be the um, sum of square deviations, the value of that. I want to minimize that, so I want to set it equal to minimum, and select the cells that I want to change. Right now I'm just going to change the time constant cell. Okay. After all of that is entered, we'll click the solve button and see what it comes up with. Okay, and what it came up with for the solution here was that the time constant is 0 0.104 seconds, which is very close to what we had, but it's a better estimate because now we're using all of the data uh, that we acquired to estimate that. Now, one thing that we also notice is um, in this uh, in our data, the output never fully reaches the 5 volt value. So if we go back to our measured output and we scroll all the way down, we see that um, our input value was measured as 4.966 volts, but our output only reached 4.916. So there's a slight difference between the, um, st uh, between the input value and the final steady state value. So um, we recognize from our measurements a couple of things. First of all, our output is not ideal, and what that implies is that the um, that this voltmeter or the uh, data acquisition card is not an ideal data acquisition card. In other words, it probably has some resistance associated with it. All right. So we also now can go back and we can adjust our model, and we can readjust the output. Um, the steady state output voltage to account for that. And then our time constant is going to be different because our um, because this additional resistance due to the data acquisition card. So I can come back to my test information right here. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go back to solver, but instead of allowing uh, solver to only change the time constant value, I'm going to allow it to change the final value as well. So I'm going to select both the final value and the time constant and allow it to change both of them. All right, and we're going to click the solve button again and see what it comes up with. All right, and now that we have a solution from the solver, we see now that our model looks a l very much like our data um, that we had. So now it says the final value or the steady state value should be 4.913 which is very close to what we measured and now because of that our time constant has decreased a little bit as well. Um, so it's still close to 0.1 but it's actually a little bit lower than 0.1 now. Um, the other thing that we need we can do is we can run rerun solver and allow it to change the initial value, the final value, and the time constant and see if that makes any more sense to us. Now we still haven't um, described why all of this is happening. Um, let's see, but right now uh, it still says the initial value is best kept at zero. So, that, um, so that's going to give us the best result for the data that we acquired. Um, so again, what we can what we have not done is we have not uh, we don't haven't fully explained why this final value is not reaching the full five volts, but we have uh, we suspect that it's due to this additional internal resistance of the voltmeter or the data acquisition card. Um, of course, this is a different system now, so these equations um, no longer apply because this is in steady state going to act like a voltage divider that's going to reduce the total uh, steady state voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so those are two different methods that we can use to estimate the time constant based on data that we have collected uh, using